We live, man. We live, man. We live, man. We doing it live, man. I don't even know how this live thing works, man. I know it's weird, man. I know it's weird, man. But this is a special occasion, man. I mean, this is Presta John number 40, man. We doing it live, man. All right, we're going to do it live for Presta John. Drop Nation with a do. Shout out to Ty with a do. Come on over here. Get cozy, man. Y'all out here. Y'all out here, man. Over here kicking it, man. We over here chilling. We're going to be over in the ether in a minute, man. I just wanted to give y'all some love, man. What it do, man? I am flying squirrel. What it do, man? I know it's weird, man. He's like, man, what's going on, man? Con drop is live, man. You, man, you know how I like to do this, man. Sometimes I, sometimes I, you know, look, man. Most of the time, I don't like to give YouTube that much, man. I like to fall back off YouTube, man. I don't like to give YouTube all this live stuff, man. I like to be in our secluded alcove, man. But I want to kick off Press the John Forty, man. I want to kick it off with the real ones, man. I want to get kick it off with the home team, man. All the home team out there, man. Shout out to y'all been doing excellent work, man. Um, I don't get an opportunity, man, to give everybody enough love, man. I mean, to be at Preston John 40, man, it's been a lot of love going into this, man. Peace and power, man, to all y'all, man. Copper color, air, what it do. Two goggles, man, is that how you say it? Sword of truth, what it do, man. Comedian, Chuck Real, what it do, man. We over here, man. Aboriginal Q, man. We in the building, man. We in the house, man. We live, man. I told y'all, man. Look, I made a couple promises, man, in the third wave, man. One, I said we're going to keep the water flowing. Two, I said we do it for the captives, man. We do it for the prisoners. And three, man, I said, you know, we're going to do it live, man. We're going to do it live a little more. Hey, hey, hop to the real ones every single day that's been kicking it, man. It's not easy to be on a solid investigation. You know what I'm saying? It's not easy to, you know, continue to fight through all these hijacks, man. So y'all been over here kicking it with a dude, David Corey. What it do, what it do, man. Y'all been over here really encouraging us, you know what I'm saying, and yourselves on the daily. You know what I mean? It's been like a daily encouragement that we all need, we need here. And, uh, you know what I mean, you need in your life, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully we're able to encourage you because you damn sure have been encouraging us, you know what I mean, through all my personal bouts, all my personal fights, man. I've been feeling Drop Nation, you know what I mean? Just... You know what I'm saying? Keep it going, man. Keep the water flowing, man. You know what I mean? Of course, they're going to make it hard for you. Of course, they're going to, you know, do everything they can, man, to, you know, get in, get in between the flow. You know, when you think about all these dams, I always got to give a hop to the homie AD, man. AD told me a long time ago, what did it do, Big Mike? Big Mike Premier, man, another real one. I mean, all y'all real ones, man. You know what I mean? I know that in real time, man, you know what I'm saying? We can kick back, man, and, you know what I'm saying? Have a brewski or something, man. Just kick back and have some tea. How about that, man? We'll kick back and have some tea. You know what I mean? All y'all, man, what it do? Uno, what it do? Man, half our library comes straight from Uno, man. What it do? Uno, love D, man. We need you in the ether, man. We need you in the ether, man. Feels good, man. Feels good. But real talk, man, we all need the encouragement. Everybody, you know what I'm saying, overcoming. And I'm proud of y'all, man, for, you know what I'm saying, all the overcoming y'all doing. You know, whether it's in the health or the family and all that stuff, man. So don't ever let no one, you know what I mean, hate on our flow, our journey, our investigation, everything that's exciting to, for us to witness. You know what I mean? We're all witnesses. And we've been digging. No, no matter what you've been digging on, at least you've been digging. No matter what you're investigating, at least you investigate. You know what I mean? So we're doing it live for Preston John number 40. Fall back, man. I got the flutes blazing, man. Fall back, man. What it do, man? Uno said, I'm here, man. I'm here, man. What it do? Feels good, man. I, I, I'm getting cozy. Y'all get cozy with me. I will be getting back in this book today. Aqua Ty got the drop. Let me tell you, man. You know what I mean? We in battle time, man. We in battle time. Get some of this. What else am I get today, man? I mean, this is Preston John 40, man. We're doing it live. It's a celebration. This is a celebration. Hope all y'all having a great day. Sorry to scare y'all like this. Y'all probably say, is there a problem drop? Something going down? Is it an emergency? Nah, man. Fall back. It's not an emergency. All right. Get a little thirsty. Got a little excited. You say, God damn it. Something going on, man. Your eye drop. I'm fine. Everything's good. It's Preston John 40. 
I just wanted to be live, man. I just wanted to be live with y'all. You know, I'm kicking it. I'm gonna be a little bit TDR in a minute. You know what I'm saying? We got con drop coming up at six, so I'm gonna be swift, man. I'm gonna be swift, man. What it do? What it do? Yeah, yeah, got that copy, man. I be forgetting we live. You know, I'm, I'm not really used to that. People being able to call on my copperage. You know what I mean? I'm like, how, how you know I'm drinking out of a copy vessel? Oh, okay, I'm live, man. I'm live, man. We're doing it live. We're doing it live, man. I'm going to get on some things, man. I'm going to talk about some stuff. We're going to talk about some stuff, man. I'm going to get in this book called uh, The Sabbatian, the Sabbatian Prophets. It's something I stumbled on by uh, Matt Goldish. And it got something to do with the San Banyan. And for whatever reason, this river, man, I mean, this river got the flow, you know what I mean? And the flow got the river. And whatever is going on and whatever the government, black ops and, and all this stuff and all these chemtrails and all this poison, we got to find the pure water, you know what I mean? We got to we gotta equalize this situation, you know what I mean? We got we to gotta dig on the pure water. And there's no more pure water I can think of than the San Banyan River. We're going to dig some more on the Nile River, the Nahal River. You know what I mean? Love to uh, the Hakan, high, high Mark, the Hakan breathing on you. Breathing on you that high. Breathing on you that, uh, you know what I'm saying, that revelation. You know what I mean? That feeling. You know, it's a feel good. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, like the Hakan say. What it do, uh, Jade, Jaden Slayer? Something like, hope I got that right. What it do, James Day? Yeah, man, what it do, Hakan, man? Peace to the Hakan. We chilling, man. What it do, man? Taino Aborigine, man. All right, man. Oh, man, you feeling that, Uno? Uno's feeling it, man. Let's go, man. Let's go. So, yeah, when we get in this drop, I'm going to talk specifically a little Alberique, man. You see the title, man, Alberique. We're going to talk a little Alberique. You know, I like to talk about these things because it, it kind of gives us uh, another layer, you know what I mean, to exist in when we talk ether, you know what I mean? That's why I like to do it live. That's why we do it live, you know what I'm saying, at, at TDR at 432 to drop, which we about to be live tonight for Turf Thurs. You know, all the independent artists, producers, come kick it with us, man. We're just going to be dropping in, talking about links and books while enjoying independent music, man. All tuned to the frequency of the Wata, man, the flow. The spiral, your Coakley, man. You remember, man. You remember the jump off the Coakley, man. So we're going to get into some Alba Reed. We're going to talk a little San Benyon, but I want to start with this link right here. What are you doing, man? Y'all out there, man? Who's out there, man? We out there? All right, all right. Oh, we got Zeke in the building. We got Chris Hamm in the building. Brandon Reed, the real ones. In the oh, man, we cool. That's all I wanted. That's, this is who I'm doing it for. Y'all here, man. Let's go, man. Let's go. All right, let's kick it, man. So I dropped these links in the drop chat. All right. I don't know how to drop them live and stuff. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to be the swift like that, man, on YouTube, man. But look, man, in the drop chat, 432 to drop. All right, click on drop chat. And all you got to do is press 1, 2, 3, 4. Get your butt in the door, man, and get these drop links. So if, if you want the links, you can go and get the links in the drop chat. So let's go. All right, I'm going to start in the Chronicles of Malabar. You know, again, Ahab type battle. Ahab to Chef Candy, man. Ahab to my wife, man. My wife actually is the first that uh, hipped us to this, man. Then we've been digging on it. You know, here and there, we always got to come home to it. It's Preston John number 40, and we're doing it live. We're going to do it live for 50. I'm going to try to be live, you know, maybe once a week or once every other week. I'll, I'll see. You know what I mean? We'll do it over here like this. I like it like that. You know what I mean? I do. and You know, you know what I mean? I do it for you. You know, I get it. I get it. I get it. That's all I got to say is I get it. You know what I mean? So I'm going to start here in the uh, Chronicles in Malabar. And just fall back. Enjoy the flutes. Get Zani. It's Drop Nation. Tune up. It's a big part of your journey is being able to tune up. Don't come here for the information. Come here for the tune up because you being here is tuning me up. You know what I mean? You dropping it on us is tuning. All this is a tune up. You know what I mean? There's layers to this, man. There's levels to this, man. So. Get your tune up on, man. Let's go. Man, all right. A Hebrew book of Ben Sarah. All right, so 
let's talk Ben Sarah. We uh, discussed this before. We're going to have to get back to it. The Hebrew book of Ben Sarah was published in 1519 in Constantinople and its appendix into the Pope in Rome. Although his story has several versions, its main theme is once upon a time in a very remote, remote land, there was a king who was not only a great king, but a Christian priest as well. I mean, you have to dodge your own hijacks. Let's go. The name of that king was Preston John, and he ruled over 72 countries. His land was rich in silver and gold, and many wonderful creatures lived there. All right. Let's go. That king wrote letters to several popes in Rome telling them that he was a faithful Christian and was acquainted with all kinds of unknown beasts. You already know what we're talking about, such as men with horns on their foreheads and three eyes, women who fought while mounted on horses, men that lived 200 years, unicorns, dragons, you already know. This legend, like many others, can be interpreted, though not without difficulty. Indeed, early scholars who investigated the subject proved that this legend has historical nucleus. So again, we got a foundational legend. Let's dig on it. And it is possible to distinguish between fiction and history. However, to make the whole story clear will not be easy. Well, we know that. That's why we've been investigating. We know it ain't easy to dig on Preston John. And again, this is Preston John number 40. We're doing it live. Just think about how many hours you've dedicated, we've dedicated, you know what I mean, to Preston John. To be at 40, I mean, that's over over 100 hours, hundreds of hours of combined research. All right, so it says the whole story, to make the whole story clear would not be easy. And this paper aims to advance only partly the discussion of historical legend. The story of Preston John is known today from almost 100 manuscripts written in several languages, including Hebrew. So we know we're digging on foundational roots when we talk priest king. Talk priest king, man, without talking you. Let's go. Including Hebrew, which are scattered throughout the libraries of Europe, since there is no possibility or room to deal with all the details of the story and all its versions. What it do, uh, Joseph Johnson, Joe Marr, Marcus Noisette, Noisette, you know what I mean? Let go, man. <laughs> David Corey, what it do? Empress Carr, what it do? Y'all ready, man? Let go, man. Press it, John Foley. It feels good to be live, man. It feels good to be live with y'all, man. I might get the live bug. I might get the shaking around here, man, with all the family, you know? This feels good. Go. So this legend, like many others, can be interpreted though not without difficulty. Indeed, early scholars who investigated the subject proved that this legend has historical nucleus, historical legend, reality, and it is possible to distinguish between the fictional and the history. However, to make the whole story clear would not be easy, and this paper aims to advance only partly the discussion of the historical legend. The story of Preston John is known today from almost 100 manuscripts written in several languages. Onward, it was accepted in Europe that Preston John, king and priest, was a ruler over territories in the east. You're in the east, let's go. Though the area of this reign was not precisely defined, it is not an easy task to separate fiction and history in this legend. And therefore, these subjects only will be discussed here. The geographical location of Preston John, the relationship between his love romance of Alexander, that plays Alexander, and the origin of the circulation of his Hebrew letters in Europe. They go. So where Preston John resided, India or Ethiopia? So we've been digging on, you know, just uh, getting out the titles, you know what I'm saying? Knowing where India is, where Ethiopia is, that these are not places, you know what I mean? But these are just, uh, you know, these, 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 these vague terms, you know, just describing places that you live. So you live over here, that's one India. You living over there, that's one Ethiopia. So we know all that. We know all that. This is Preston John Foley. Let's go. So Preston John. Let's take it right here. Connecting Preston John with India is inevitable from the Hebrew text on the one hand 
while data from the legend will support the Indian origin on the other. First of all, India is mentioned several times in these letters. Second, Cali cut, Cali cut, which was one of the most important port cities in Malabar in southern India, the place where Vasco da Gama, Vasco da Gama was sent, is mentioned in one of the letters. Third, these facts would I definitely suffice but further evidence appears in the form of statement. And here's the statement. And in the large India is buried the body of St. Thomas the Apostle. Now you know that when you talk St. Thomas, it's all linked into so-called Christianity. But something tells me, like it's probably telling you, that this St. Thomas, there's a lot more to it. You know what I mean? There's a lot more to it. Oh man, we got, we got Aqua Tai in the building. Well, you already know. You already know we got Aqua Thai in the building, man. Y'all get out of hop to Aqua Thai, man. I mean, I wouldn't be reading this if Aqua Thai didn't drop it on this, man. What'd he do? Let go. So, yeah, man. Where's what's up with this St. Thomas? You know what I mean? That's, I think, we got to do a whole series on this St. Thomas. You know what I'm saying? He's come up too much in the Preston John investigation not to give love. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, really seek out what this St. Thomas really is, man. What this foundational legend really comes to. Let's go. Hence, after studying all the features independently and then putting together, it is inevitable to reach the unquestionable conclusion that Prester John held from India. All right, perfect. Then we say, well, which one? You know, you already know. That is, the letters of Preston John tell a story about India, not Ethiopia, but we know it's the same place. And it's unfortunate that legendary medieval opinions have survived and still can be found in modern scholarship. It would not be out of place here to stress that the confusion between India and Ethiopia is ancient. So this is ancient. This is ancient drop. You know what I mean? This is ancient shit. You got comb through, you know what I mean? You gotta comb through this stuff anxiously because it's been an ancient confusion. We, we're we inheriting, we are inheriting ancient confusion. I need you to really pontificate on that, man. We are inheriting ancient confusion, you know what I mean? Don't think that this is some new investigation, just like when we dig about, you know what I'm saying, the flat plane or the earth plane versus the globe. Ancient confusion, ancient confusion. All right, so that's why we laugh. Like when people get all emotional and crazy about us investigating, it's like this is an ancient investigation. I mean, if you this emotional about us, I mean, imagine how much you would have been anxiously confused. You know what I'm saying? Now it says apparently the confusion persisted as a result of the fact that both in India and Ethiopia, Eastern Christians lived in their own kingdom surrounded by pagans. And this is not enough to confuse any medieval man whose geographical knowledge was limited. Anyhow, this is another fact that adds to the confusion. The letters of Preston John tell about black priests. <laughs> I mean, I can't make this stuff up. I can't make it up, man. All right, go get the link, pull it up. We, gonna, we got a couple more drops. We're just going to flow through this, man. We're going to flow through it like the water. So there's another fact that adds to the confusion. The letters of Preston John tell about black priests. All right. They're not saying like, uh, they ain't talking about just Jesuits, man. All right. They're talking about black priests, right? copper colored knocker. That's what the letters of Preston John talk about. For example, about the Jews, we have heard all the time from black priests who have come and are coming daily. Any layman might associate these black priests with Africa. Any layman might associate these black priests with Africa without knowing that a major part of the population in Southern India is black. Man, time out, man. How gonna make me do this? Man, hold up, man. I would say pause it, but you can't. <laughs> so read. Take your time to read. Read it, man. This ain't no play play. 
All right. What I say, this ain't no play play, man. So, I don't know. Why they go and press the John? Because then you get to dig on the black priest, man. Then you get to dig on the black priest. Why they go and press the John? Because you're talking about you. You're talking about your priesthood. You're talking about your kingdom. Why dig on priest, king, press the John? Because you're connecting black, press the John to black King David to you, to your black ass. All right? So it all connects to you. You got to look, man. We all press the John's ass, man. We've been on press the John's ass. But we about to get on Genghis Khan's neck, man. We about to get on Genghis Khan's neck bone, man. Because it's only right to start circulating, you know what I'm saying, a part of this investigation around St. Thomas, and then start circulating a part of this invest investigation around Genghis Khan, like really digging in on Genghis Khan. Then we gotta take it back to the Cholas and the Pandy, you know what I mean? We gotta get back into the Sauslands, the Kingdom of Georgia. We gotta definitely get into the Picts and the Rus and the Bagratid dynasty. Definitely get born to the Byzantine Empire because they say that in 1453, not only did the Byzantine Empire fall, but so did the San Banyan River stop flowing. So you got the San Banyan River and the takedown of the Byzantine Empire one year after the Papal Bull doomed our verses in 1452. And if you ain't looking at that, if you're ignoring these, you know what I'm saying, clear, obvious connections, and you know what are we what are we talking about? So you know this all co comes back into you know the whole Hawatha 1500s, which definitely connect all the way into the Tacum, say you know 1800s. But you gotta because they could all be one thing. As far as we know, the 1800s, like how how be always saying, as far as we know, the 1800s are the 1200s. As far as we know, when we talk about Tartaria and the mud floods, yada yada yada. Matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, when you talk about time shifts in that time period, which between 12 and 1800 was 600 years, something like that. Uh, my brother just hit me on the DM, man, on the IG. I'm using my phone. I can't pull it up, but he just hit me. Uh, Morris brother, uh, Noble something. All right? And my brother Noble something, he said, look, man, I appreciate all the work you're doing and definitely are you know breaking down these timelines just know that the reason why the moors you know signed the date uh what, 14 i forgot the date he gave he was like because you got to take 2019 and you got to you got to subtract 580 and we might have dug on you know some of this but i'm just gonna, i'm just using this as an example to tell you how fickle you know what i mean these timelines really are so you got to take 2019 and they signed the date with 2019 minus 580. You know what I mean? Oh, Edward Burns said Duca tears broke down. Yeah, man. Shout out to a series Duca tears, man. Always uh, shows love. Very uh, positive flow right there, man. So the same. <coughs> Look, man, I'm about building up. You know what I mean? We could talk about differences and we could talk about the past. And all this, but you know what I mean? As long as you ain't trying to hijack us currently, all right, cool. We could talk, you know what I mean? But we definitely got to be clear. We definitely got to be clear in this investigation. So that 580 is amazing, man. Uh, love to Uno, man. 2020 vision, 2020. Let's go, man. We got to see clearly. Got to see clearly, man. All right, let's go. Talk um, timelines, man. You know, 1800s, 1200s, they are already pushing their stuff back 600 years anyway. Oh, so I don't know, man. I'm not a genius about this. You know what I mean? I'm just digging on it with you. I'm just digging on it with you. I'm digging on it right now. I'm live, man. Look, look at me, man. I'm digging on it, man. Look at my face, man. 1800s, 1200s. Tukumse. You got Hawatha, or in the 1200s, you got Preston John, <laughs> Priest King, Priest King. They're saying that 580 years have been at it. We're digging off for the Manco, saying that there's three different time shifts, 300 years. I think another one's like 1100 or 10, 
a thousand eighty or something like that. Another one seventeen hundred, close to eighteen hundred. So we're digging on multiple time shifts, man. So to them, since time was added, then they take that time out, and you know you do the math. Fourteen, whatever is is the year. Now you combine that with some great drop by Irvin Reed, man. If you ain't got this drop, head on drop. Go into the search box, click on Irvin Reed. <laughs> yeah, man. Type battle said eighteen hundred, twelve hundred today, man. What's the difference, man? What's the difference? You know how much can be done in the course of a couple hundred years. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Edward Barnes, Montezuma, that plays. When you put all these people together, Mansa Musa, Montezuma, Hawata, Tecumse, Dragon Canoe, Preston John. <clears throat> and then we're reading right here out of the Chronicle of Malabar about the Black Priest. And then you connect that with the indigenous copper color naga. And then you factor in 580 years, you know, things start to kind of culminate enough to at least, you know, break through parts of these illusions. You know what I mean? Don't don't come to me to break you out of the complete illusion. You know, we're all figuring this out. You know, you got to go within you to start, you know, swirling this stuff around. And this is what you're doing. So I, I, I ain't telling you nothing that you're not already doing. And that's why I'm proud of all y'all, because whether you got YouTube channels, uh, IG, Facebook, you're getting the word out, whether you ain't really on social media like that, but you just kind of, you know, chiming in, whether you falling back right now, just kicking it, man. You got your family. You're like, look, man, this uh, guy's talking crazy about clients. Go check him out. And y'all live, man. What do you do, man? We live, man. It's Preston John number 40. All right. So, you know what I'm saying? The price is going up. The Ben saying the price is going up. What does that mean? What does it mean when the price go up, man? It means that there's even more separation that they can't recompense you. They can't pay you back. They bankrupt. We, we, we're, we're raising the price to make sure they can't pay us back. Stop asking for anything, man. Don't ask for nothing from these people, man. You know what I mean? If anything, take back what's yours. So when we drop the whole habeas drop, if that helps you <clears throat> take back what's yours or separate and say, you know what, you can't use my 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 vessel this way, then cool. You know, that gives you more separation, if anything. But don't do nothing to, you know, sign on a dotted line and be more connected with this particular system. This ship is falling, man. This this ship is sinking. You want to be able to separate as much as possible. You know what I'm saying? So we over here, we separating. It ain't easy to be hijack free, man. It ain't easy to dodge your own hijack, man. It ain't easy to dodge your own hijack, man. Love to y'all for supporting me. I got a whole bid. I got a, got a whole bid of all the new uh, drip drop, man. So, hey, hop to the real ones, man, for showing that. And love, man. You know what I'm saying? Spreading the frequency, man, across the plane. And yeah, all right, so cool. How we doing out there? Oh, man, we got Con Fresh in the building, man. Yo, Con Fresh. It's going live right now, man. See, we live. I got, I got controls. I got the controls. Man, we about to head over and check out Con Fresh's show. All right, at four three two to drop. He's in. He's in the drop chat over here, but he's gonna be in the real, in the real secluded alcove, man. Right now, right now, coming in hot, man. So keep on flowing. We're gonna flow this on now. Talk about a couple more links, and we're gonna go fall back with Con Fresh, man. Let's go. All right, so, you know, this is just an interesting thing, man, talking about these black priests. It says again, for example, about the Jews, we have heard all the time from the black priests who have come and are coming daily. Any layman might associate these black priests with Africa. <laughs> That's funny, man, because any layman might associate you with Africa. I mean, doesn't that kind of give away the telltale like any lame associate them with the continent of Africa? They're going to associate you with the continent of Africa, man. You know what I mean? So it says, without knowing that the major part of the population in southern India is black, since Christians live there, 
it would not be unreasonable to assume that black priests live there as well. It should be kept in mind that the Jewish community in Cochin, C-O-C-H-I-N, on the coast of Malabar, was divided into white and black Jews. Here are a few reasons why Preston John was searched for in Africa, though as it claimed, as is claimed above, a careful reading of the text reveals that the search should have been made in India, not Africa. And since they didn't find it there, where's the next place to look in a uh, you know more rational you know mind state? Obviously, you got to come up and off. Everyone's looking for the black priest. So not only do we get it from uh, Preston John, the uh, Lost Tribes of Israel by um, Rudolph Sanders, literally telling you that this was a you know so-called black copper colored man. And not only do we get it right here, that's the only picture in this book shows this, this version of Preston John. And then they tell you on the front cover that you're talking about a knight. Just like Aqua Tai say, man, it's the furthest Indians. What it do, Purple Seth, man? What it do, my peoples, man? I know y'all support, man. I know I see y'all, man. You know what I mean? I definitely read your comments and I dig on it. Y'all keep this going. You know what I mean? Because I know how, how rare it is, how important it is to dig on the quality of the recon that we're digging on, you know what I mean? And it's a group, you know what I'm saying, tribal effort, you know what I mean? You, you, you've seen us really kind of tribe up right before your eyes, man, you know what I mean? So you're doing it with us, we're doing it live. Come on, man, come on. So I'm, I'm about to get into this Albreek. I'm about to get into this Albreek. So before I get into the Albreek, we need to understand, man, they came looking for you, black people. They weren't taking you as 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 slaves looking for you. They were looking for you and they were bringing other melanated people or you're talking about other melanated people that you were already at war with that were looking for you. You did? Because when you're going back 580 years or you're going back 700 years, just like the bro said, shout out to the bro, Sir Duke of Tears, literally told us, man, you know, that there was already a more on more war going on here, 700 years that put you to the 700s. So then we can <coughs> line up all the uh, to Sylvanus to Texas 700s drop. We can line that up, you know what I mean? With, with just the time shift and all that's going on. And 700s could also be the 1200s, like we could all line up. But now you got a Solomon that's rocking in the 700s and you got a Preston John that's in the 1200s. And the one thing that brings it all together is the, is the fountain of you. Because <laughs> then you're like, how can King David be rocking in, let's say, 1200 and Solomon in America, Solomon the mound builder, be rocking in 775 or whatever it says in the Forbidden Histories of America. But in the Preston John letter, partially what we are getting right now, what, what, what we've been you know, digging on, he says, me and my whole tribe, me and my whole squad have taken six baths in the fountain of you. Six baths each time we turn back to 32. You ain't got to believe it. This could be unbelievable. But I'm telling you, you're unbelievable, man. You've be, you been unbelievable. <clears throat> That's why they keep having to label you some type of fairy tale, some type of mythology. You've been unbelievable, man. My people, my family. So, you know, don't get lost in the unbelievable because the unbelievable is all about you. You know what I'm saying? So it says, however, the Middle Ages did not know where Preston John lived and it, it, all the adventurers went looking for him. In the 13th century, Marco Polo identified Preston John with the Khan of the Cari. So we talked about the Cari, the Cari, the Cariites, a tribe in Mongolia, which was then the Nestorian Christian. So now we got the differentiation between a real high hijack Christian and what they're calling a Nestorian Christian. And it even said another text that they were called Christians, even though they weren't Christians, because they were nice to Christians. And because they were nice to Christians, the Christians called them Christians so that they can form allies against 
the Moors or Saracen or whatever you want to call it, they needed, you know, they, they were getting the ass whooped already. All right. So some of this you already know. It's press time 40. I'm bringing it together. Some people are serving away for the very first time. A hop to the real ones. Uh, brother, brother Hawk said, I can't wait to read it when I have time. Yeah, man. Get that drop in the drop chatter, man. One, two, three, four, get you through the door. But it's all right, man. We're digging on it. You know, it's no rush to this stuff. It's no rush to this stuff. It's, it's lightweight and it's heavyweight at the same time. You know, he's talking about Hosea three and five, man. Searching for your creator and David. Which David? That's what we're searching for. Let's go. So Marco Polo identified Preston John with the Khan of the Carrier a tribe in Mongolia, which was then Nestorian, all right? With old king, renowned for wisdom, renowned for wise counsel. Others continued searching for him in China. Where is China? We talked about that. And, you know, the whole uh, Atlantic Monthly Volume 104. <laughs> Remember this drop right here? You can see that. You can't pause it. Maybe you can see it though. What it do, Tori? I see you, bro. Let's go. What it do, Brandon Reed? Much love, man. Let's go. Hey, ha. Ha, real man. Because you can see clearly. Remember this Atlantic monthly drop? I can't. I can't read it enough. Every time it comes more to light. Talking about Cuba, he said Columbus. At the same time, Columbus is equally anxious to reach the mainland of China. So first you're like, oh, he's lost over there. He's trying to reach China. And then you start to see what's going on. And China's over here, man. India's over here. He knows exactly where he's going. Don't believe the hype. He's going to India Superior, and China is very close to it, apparently. Let's go. Uh, two days after the discovery, he feels he must go on to try and find Kapango. We've been digging on that because that is Japan. So he's looking for China and Japan. Here it's called Kapango. Here, Japan is called Kapango is called the Chiapas or Chiapanese in South America. He believes it from the signs the Indians make to be this very land. At the same time, he is equally anxious to reach the mainland of China. He is determined to deliver the letters of the Catholic kings to the Grand Khan. Khan? Khan? Let's go. And we know this is a black king. All right, we just did. We just dug on a black priest. So called, you know. Now so hopeless in anachronism with the said Grand Khan, he gathers from the natives a Cuban monarch. So we're talking Cuba. This is out the Atlantic Monthly, Volume 104. <coughs> a Cuban monarch was now at war. The Khan's great ships, he understood, came to Cuba. So now we're connecting the Prester John Grand Khan with Cuba. Let's go. 10 days journey from the Chinese mainland. And I said, well, since when, since when has Cuba only been, you know, 10 days journey on the boat from, from China? I mean, you know, last time I checked, it took months to get from this part of the world, that part of the world, Cuba and China, you know? So now you start to realize when they're talking about Cuba, when we talk about China, you know, you're talking about a distance, some something like a Mexico, you know, going from Mexico to Cuba, to the Chinese mainland. The cotton of the West Indies will be sure of a good market in his cities. His majesty was perhaps in the grand city of Cathay. It is certain, he writes, while still off the Cuban coast, that I am in front of Zato and Gan Gyanse and Amoy Harbor and Hong Kao. And again, in the Cariba or Caniba, which is described to him as the mainland behind Hispaniola, in our language, the north coast of South America. So again, now we're saying specifically, in South America, 10 days journey to China. 
on those boats. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> That's when you start to kind of connect it and bring it all together. So last part I'm going to get out of this Chronicle of Malabar, and then we're going to go to the Sabbatian prophets and do a dismount right here and press the John the legend and his sources, man. What it do, man? Y'all out there, man? You good? Everybody reeling? You reeling up? Let's go, man. Let's keep reeling. How y'all reeling, man? I know how you feeling. How you reeling, man? Hey, uh, Ralph Worley, Purple Set. What it do? That's the truth. Hey, man, we digging on it. You know, we don't know. We don't know about truth this and truth that, but we, we damn sure are digging on it, man. Dragon Canoe. Let's go, man. Chef Candy's in the building. Let go, man. Let go, man. That's all we need. That's all we need, man. I'm about to, I'm about to throw this phone. Yeah, I guess so. Y'all just feed me, man, with the, uh, you know, good energy, man, the good vibration. You know what I mean? That, that's we're just trying to keep the spiral going. All right, man, let's rock, man. So we're talking about the Sabbatian prophets. And this is a book by Matt Goldish. I'm jumping right in. It says, to many formerly unknown peoples discovered by Europeans in that age of exploration had another implication for Christians and Jews as well. Religious legends told of powerful Christian and Jewish kingdoms hidden by God in distant lands that would reappear. So when you hear about something reappearing, you know what I mean? Just just know that they they say they, they uh, discovered you. You know what I mean? They say they, they just discovered you or rediscovered you. You know what I mean? Because you're reappearing. You've probably been rediscovered. You know what I mean? Let's go. Uh, religious legends told of powerful legend of these Hebrew kingdoms, let's go, hidden by Hawa in distant lands that would reappear in the apocalyptic age to fight the wars of the Messiah. The Christian realm of Prester John, they said. Oh, I thought it was Nestorian. Let's go. The Red Jews, the Red Jews, Gog, Magog, and the lost 10 tribes of the Hebrews. <laughs> so let me read it again. Religious legends told of a powerful, it says Christian and Jewish kingdoms hidden by God in distant lands that would reappear in the apocalyptic age to fight the wars of the Messiah, the realm of Preston John, the red Jews. Uno, man, love to Uno, did an incredible drop, man. Make sure y'all subscribe to get into the root of it all. Uh, breaking down the red, copper, and that red is copper. I mean, it's a beautiful drop, so we know and I know when they talk red, they're specifically talking about, you know what I'm saying, Indian red. You know, they're talking about copper. They're talking about the Naga. They're talking about you, you know what I'm saying? And the 10 lost tribes of the Hebrews are also directly associated with Presta John. A high purple set. She said Kapongo, the real name of China. Is that how it's spelled? Yeah, they spelled it um in the Atlantic Journey Journal. Kapongu. They spelled it C I P A N G O. Some people spelled it Z I. Earlier they spelled it Z I P A N G O. So either you can change the C to a to a Z. All right. But yeah, give my eye. Uh So each of these had a specific role in the messianic imagination of the Hebrews, and it was a natural, it was natural that the civilizations discovered in Africa, Asia, and America. They put America last, but you ain't last, my naga. You first, because it's all about you. It's all about you, man. It's all about you, man. They're looking for you the whole time. I'm just trying to break down. We're just trying to see clearly together that this whole thing, this whole business has always been about you. You know what I mean? This whole thing's been about you. From the moment the Crusades popped off, they're searching for King David, which means what? That they're searching for you. You know what I'm saying? They're searching for you. And when they found you, they told you from somewhere else and they tried to hide your history and do all this stuff. And now it just kind of rings, you know, so clear, man. You know, when we get into the uh, Stones edition, 
we get into the Stones edition, man. Dig on it. We'll talk Hosea chapter three. Hashem, Hashem said to me, go again, love a woman who was beloved of her companion, yet an adulteress. So automatically the most high is comparing his children with an adulteress. You know what I'm saying? Someone who loves another, you know, energy. You know what I mean? Someone who's breaking an oath. Like Hawa's love for the children of Israel. Yet they turn to the gods of others and cherish goblets of great wine. So I acquired her for myself. Since she my You know what I mean? She, she ain't just going to be hoeing, you know, with going crazy. I'm going to go ahead and buy this hoe so I can have this hoe all to myself. Since, since you want to be a hoe. Because I didn't give you a nice fair life, you know, I, I, I done made a fair woman out of you. I treated you right. I made I made an honest woman out of you, Israel. You know what I mean? I'm just translating. <laughs> I made an honest woman out of you, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Flying squirrel said, pimp. I mean, that's just what it is. This is what it is. Since you're going to be a hoe, I'm going to treat you like a hoe. Because that's what you want to do. Let's read it again. Tell me I'm tripping. <laughs> Go again, love a woman who was beloved of her companion, yet an adulteress, like Hawaz's love for the children of Israel. Yet they turn to the gods of others and cherish goblets of grapes. All right, so you're going to be a hoe. But now, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. So I acquired her for myself. I'm going to buy that hoe. Since you're going to put your whole heritage and put a price on your head, since you want to put a price on your head, I'm going to acquire you so they can acquire you. Because if they acquire you, you're going to be lost forever. You're going to be a hoe forever. You're going to be lost in the sauce, man. All right? So I acquired her for myself for 15 pieces of silver and a comer, a homer of barley and a lesset of barley. And I say, just hold up, hold up. Wait for me. Do not act a harlot and do not marry another man. All right, so straighten, straighten up. I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to give you a grace period. You know, Christians call it grace. You know what I'm saying? We always read about <coughs> the Christians call it grace, man. You know, it's a grace. God's grace. No, Hawaii is giving you time not to be a hoe. Hawaii is trying to put you aside so you don't get pimped out forever. I mean, yeah, you getting pimped out, you know, right now by the hijack, you know what I mean? But at least Hawaii has bought you back. You know what I'm saying? At least Hawaii has bought you back. You just don't know it. You ain't acting like it. You still... A lot, a lot of us are still acting like a hoe. You know what I'm saying? But at least we ain't got to be a hoe. We ain't got to be a hoe. All we got to do is listen. Put our put our, put our power first. You know what I'm saying? Keep our Shabbat. You know what I mean? Feel good, man. Keep our days. Honor our creator. Our father, mother, above, our Hawa. Put it all together. Stop being a hoe. You know what I mean? We can do that. He's giving us days to do it. What did he say? Fall back for some time. Wait for me for many days. Do not act like a hoe. I mean, do not act like a harlot. And do not marry another man. And so will I be faithful to you. All you got to do is stop tricking. Stop tricking. And I and I love you back. I'll take you back. Now do you see what this whole... Uh... <laughs> I mean, that's my breakdown of it, man. You know what I mean? That's my breakdown. <laughs> You want my breakdown? That's my breakdown. All right. But no, nah, man, that's uh that kind of is a shade of the old Jesus and uh Mary Magdalene. You know what I mean? Where you got Mary Magdalene, she the hoe. You know, she or she's she, she's supposed to be painting like a hoe. You know what I mean? Oh, she's out there doing this. But but Jesus loved that hoe. He loved it so much, he stopped the hoe from getting stoned. You know, that's the whole story. Oh, she she she's acting like a harlot. She's about to get stoned, but then Jesus takes it back. She's good now. She's pure now, right? That's you. You know what I mean? So these are all stories put into one 
passage to have, you know, be in three dimensions instead of five dimensions. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's read it out, man. Jose at three or five. <laughs> You're like, drop is crazy. Drop you crazy, man. What you mean? What you mean we be in a hole? I didn't say it, man. I'm just reading. Let's go. He <laughs> said, wait for me for many days. Do not act like a harlot and do not marry another man. And so will I be faithful to you for many days. For many days, I'll be faithful to you. For verse four, for many days, the children of Israel will sit with no king. So since you played the harlot, you got to have no king, no con. Many days without a king, no officer, no sacrifice, no pillar, no effort, no, no terror. Afterward, verse five, afterward, the children of Israel will return. You're going to stop being a harlot, man. Welcome back. You'll return. Seek Hawa, your creator, and David, their king. And David, and David. Why? You know, it's not just here. You know, we're, we're checking this out in Ezekiel 37. David will be prince forever, shepherd, one shepherd, all this stuff. So we dig, we dig, we dig on David because we have to, because we return, we seek our creator and David. Why? Because you're talking about the black priest, man. This lets you know who they were looking for. And when you look in the mirror, you know, just know that, that they were looking for you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you already know it, man. What it do, Queen Copper Ninja, man, what it do? Yeah, man, hey, hi, this is what it is. So dig on it, you know, we over here just, you know, surfing a particular wave and you know, looking at it from different sides, emptying our cup, coming back stronger. But we know that we search for Hawa, we search for Hawa, we search for Hawa. In all our actions, we search for our creator. We search for David. Afterwards, the children of Israel will return, seek out their creator and David. And they will tremble for Hawa. Doesn't say fear, you know, it means that you got reverence, man. You guys, that it makes you tremble, man. Tremble for his goodness in the end of days. So we're just talking the end of days, the end of days. And, you know, I ain't got to say nothing for you to know this is the end, <laughs> you know what I mean, of a time. How long do you expect this particular? empire or whatever you want to call it to rule you know what i mean so this is the end of that there's a beginning coming some people are already are wise enough to start flip flipping rip and treating you a little nicer other folks ain't gonna get it till it's too late let's read what it says in the sabbatian prophets <coughs> so we got these red jews we got the 10 lost tribes of Hebrews in the realm of Prester John. Prester John was this legendary king who was believed to control vast multitudes of Christians or Hebrews. They just said they had the 10 lost tribes. Why they keep trying to make you Christians, man? It's crazy. And untold wealth somewhere in the uncharted lands of India. <laughs> So where are the uncharted lands of, Israel, of, of, of India? America. This is the uncharted land of, Israel, of India. Although the earliest stories about President John did not explicitly discuss his role in the second coming. Wait a minute. Stop. Whoa. Hold up, man. Let me get it bigger. Don't pause it, but just read it, man. All right. All right. <laughs> Although the earliest stories about Preston John did not explicitly discuss his role in the second coming. So who's who's Jesus? You search for Hawa and priest king. Dawu, because you have a lineage and you have a covenant. 
and you have to show honor to your family. Imagine a family, you got your hierarchy, you know what I mean? You got you, you got the con of cons, right? You got the creator himself, right? And then you got his loved ones. And, and a major part of the reason you're still here is because there's a covenant with David. You know what I'm saying? David's covenant is forever. Now, you can downplay that if you want to. You can downplay the Shabbat if you want to. But you can't, you know, play that with the Creator. You know what I'm saying? Searching for David is not outside of you. You know what I'm saying? This is your pineal gland, man. It's your pine cone, man. Ask Uno, man. This is who you are for you to redeem you, for you to be in a frequency that creates another reality, man. We talk four, three, two. This is not in this matrix. This is outside the matrix, man. This is nine above the firmament, man. This is above the barrier. So you're seeking a reality outside the barrier. The creator is telling you, hey, there's not going to be no barrier. Pretty soon, it's all one thing. It's all one flow. Pretty soon, there's no firmament. There's no separation. So all we're doing, religion-free, uh, Definitely hijack free, you know what I'm saying? Um, mythology free. All we're doing is waking up within ourselves and we're on certain investigation within ourselves. And you might be witnessing it outside of yourself through books or through the internet or through this YouTube live situation, you know what I mean? But this is all going on within you, man. You know what I'm saying? You are purifying you. Searching for your priest king is searching for your own priesthood. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> what makes it come, you know, really to a, a full spiral, a full reality is when you factor in the San Manyan River, is when you factor in this founded youth and these things that are far from mythology. When you start factoring all this stuff in, you say, damn, you know, there is another reality that is existing that we're not tapping into. So that's all we're doing is saying what's there. You know what I mean? Because it's something more to tap into to assist you being you, and that's what you need to do. Let's go. So again, uh, although the earlier stories about Preston John did not explicitly discuss his role in the second coming, a famous letter attributed to him that appeared in the mid-12th century at a critical time in the history of the Crusades does carry messianic connotations. Well, David carries a lot of messianic connotations, I would say. David carries a lot of messianic connotations if you're seeking Hawa and David in the end of days. Got everything to do with the second coming. Got everything to do with messianic connotations. You're talking about the Messiah, man. 12th century, man. I mean, damn. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about the 12th century, man. What are you talking about? 17, 1800s, man. I mean, you know, you tell me. Man. In it, Preston John expresses his wish to visit the Holy Land with a huge army and chastise the enemies of Christianity. And I was thinking about this. It's an interesting thing with Genghis Khan, because we're about to get into Genghis Khan, you know, as a dismount, just to bring, you know, Preston John 40, man, all the way together you know what i mean i'm doing my best to kind of cover a couple of things you know throughout the way but bring it all together because like i said this third wave is not about um new information don't don't come over here if you're just looking for that but how to apply the information that we've been digging on for years is what the third wave is about because the prisoners and the captives is, is just now getting it you know what i'm saying and maybe it just started with me personally handing these people you know, whatever I could find information from the law library, <laughs> you know, that had in the British encyclopedias, they had information on Preston John. And I would make photocopies of this and I would pass it around, you know what I mean? Say, hey man, hold on to this. And it's amazing what that can do for a bro that, you know, prisoners don't get nothing but, you know, shitty magazines. Once in a while they'll pass out magazines or letters from home or something. They don't get no Preston John British Encyclope Encyclopedia Britannica drop, you know what I mean, or all this other stuff. So that enabled them, you know, to really kind of, you know, be in another energy while they had to do that sit down, you know what I mean, and, 
You know what I mean? I, I really got to witness the power of the search and this investigation without the internet, without anybody hearing about nothing on YouTube. You think this is where it's at? Nah, man, it's, it's happening on a real uh, foundational level. You know what I mean? Where the, 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 the right ones, you know what I'm saying? The right ones are starting to get this and it don't take a bunch of them. It don't take a hundred thousand people to dig on Preston John. It just takes a few. It don't take a hundred thousand people to start digging on what the seraphim are or, or angels or, you know, what they call these, this, this element of fire, of water, of ether, of land that we call Dragon, Dragon, Dragon. You know what I mean? It don't take a bunch of people to start remembering, you know, these beautiful, you know, etheric flows, man, um, you know, that were attacked at the same time you were attacked. They got dragon slayers. They got Naga slayers. What's the difference? You got put in captivity. Phoenix is in captivity. We do it for Phoenix, man. You know what I'm saying? What's the difference between what happened to your actual guardians and what happened to you? It seems like everyone had to take that out. You know what I mean? So this, these are the things we start lining up as we go forward. Again, in it, Preston John expresses his wish to visit the Holy Land. Um, with a huge army and chastise the enemies of the Christianity. So we said, is this game that's kind by now? And that's what we're going to look out for. Is that when we keep hearing that Preston John's supposed to be helping these Christians, we also know that gang is kind and his people, especially with the Tartars, they did a lot of conversion, even more than the Hebrews did. You know what I mean? So, um, but still not enough of them converted to where I would really call the gang is kind's people Christians, but enough of them got down with Christians. Day enough of them got down. Now, it says a message with clear apocalyptic intent. The red Jews were a mythological horde of fanatic Christian hating Hebrews. <laughs> Come on, man. I can't make this up, man. I can't make it up, man. So let's go. The Red Jews were a mythical horde of fanatic. All right, let's cut all that extra fancy, uh, colorful language out. Uh, Red Jews are Christian hating Hebrews. All right, let's start from the top. Red Jews are Hebrews that hate Christians. All right. So you can read it as red Jews were Christian hating Hebrews. What it do, Mario? What it do, Mario Davis? Tarvis Thorn? What it do? What it do? Let's go. We talking about ready? Yep, we talking about ready. Let's go. <laughs> red Jews. You see how I'm just gotta I gotta I gotta translate, you know, this 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 bastard tongue we're speaking. So either you're gonna say red Jews were a mythical horde of fanatic. Christian hating Hebrews, or you're going to say red Jews are Hebrews that hate Christians. You know what I mean? And I think any Hebrews that were invaded by anybody claiming Zeus <laughs> would hate, you know, have, have, I mean, Hawa loves Jacob and hated Esau, according to Malachi, right? So, all right, I get that. That's all I'm saying is I get it. Christian hating Hebrews. Okay. Yeah. It describes every Naga that got invaded, all right? Described in German literature over many centuries, according to the stories, they would constitute the bloody legions of the Antichrist. anti which Christ? That's the next question. In the wars preceding the second coming, Gog and Magog are the violent nations which will be the enemies of the forces of good in the cataclysmic final war, all right? Ezekiel 38, 39, the lost tribes were those Jews of the northern kingdom of Israel who were exiled in the 8th century B.C., okay, that's the hijack, and were not found by their brethren of the southern tribes when they were, in turn, exiled in the 6th century to the same general region, all right? In ancient times, their presence was reported in various terrestrial locations, as well as behind the mythical 
sabbatical river. We're talking about the San Banyan River. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're talking the river. Let's go, let's keep talking this river. The San Banyan, which flowed with rocks rather than with water. So it had no water, but it flowed with rocks. And these things existed, these rock rivers. This one was special. And some other drop that Aqua Tai dropped on us, um, you know, it had to do with these underground rivers. And I got to find some more drop in it. But it definitely might connect to something uh, of an interesting dig if we can connect the San Banyan to the underground rivers. You know what I'm saying? Um, that might kind of blow open a piece of the investigation. So love the tide battle. So it said it flowed with rocks rather than water and was supposed to prevent the discovery of the tribes until messianic days. Their return is an integral part of the Jewish messianic expectations. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. It says credible reports that the legendary nations or the Hebrews have been discovered abounding. They were turning up in Africa, India, America, and the Far East. Contact was actually made between Europeans and both Jews and Christians in Abyssinia, which one? Uh, this was not only scientific proof that biblical prophecies have been validated, but also a powerful indication that the Messianic age was near or not. What reason could God have in bringing together the known world with these remote kingdoms, if not to join forces for the apocalyptic denouncement? Oh, well, you know what I'm saying? You about to find out the reason, man. You about to find out why we popping up and what the plan is. So let's get it from here, man. This is the Albreic or Alberic de Troyes Fontaine's Chronica. All right. Um, Aqua Tai not only did uh, drop this book off to the drop library in real time, but she also made a PDF of every page of this particular document. Uh, man, I lost lost my bookmark, man. Now, now I'll never find my place, man. All right, man. So uh, Ty Battle dropped it on us. So uh, you can go get the drop. Go to 432thedrop.com. Just go on the search box. The search box is really cool, man. All right? If you ain't surfing wave, man. I mean, we just get it started. That's all you need to know. You think you witnessed something? Oh, man, I've been surfing the way. Oh, the full design of what the tribe is putting together, man. So get the drop. Remember, we're searching for the priest king, man. And remember, the priest king look uh, something like you, man. Oh, uh, man. Where's the priest king? Where's the priest king? Where the priest king look like you, man? Go. Let go. You see, he's holding the towel. Oh, that's a cross. That's a towel. If you don't know your towels, let's go. <laughs> Albert. So let's read a piece of this. We're going to read a little bit of this Albert for the dismount. We're going to read some of this. Uh, Carpini, let's go, let's go. So let's get some of this Alberg, some of this Carpini. And I might, if we have time, we'll get a little bit more of this uh, Simon of San Quentin. <clears throat> and it really is beautiful, man, because all these, you know, are sources, letters, dates, you know what I mean? You got to dig on it. Hold up, man. Hold up, man. Oh, oh, my bad. My busy. There we go. Uh, I got to flip the script. There we go. I'm back. Nope. Bam. There we go. There we go. <laughs> my bad. I, I, I had to block. I, I, had to get the, I had to get hijacked free. I don't know how to do the moderators, man. So y'all got to teach me how to do the moderators because, you know, I get hijacked free very fast. 
I'm sort of a habitual hijack freer. You know what I mean? So just let me know if there's some hijacks in here, man. I'm just going to blizzard. Black. Blah. Bomb, bomb. I'm a bomb the clutch hijack, man. All right, man. We cool? All right. Cool, cool, cool. We good. We good. We good. Make sure we hijack free. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm a uh, moderator's popping, though. Don't even trip. So I ain't even got to be hijack free. If we stay ready, we ain't got to get ready. Let's go. So we can get some Carpini. We'll get some Alberic. Let's get it for the dismount. So this is dated between 1232 and 1241. This is Alberic's Chronicle penned progressively from 1232 to 1241, discusses various aspects of the Preston John legend, providing accounts of the Preston John letter, Alexander III's letter, the Fifth Crusade, and giving in particular further details of the conquest of the Mongols in Russia and Eastern Europe. Albert was the first Christian author who acknowledged the Mongols might be neither Christians nor Saracens. So this is very important. Let's go. I mean, what do you do, Joe Kalisi? Let go. Let go. So again, Alberic was one of the first Christian authors who acknowledged the Mongols might be neither Christians nor Saracens. All right. Very important part. At the end of this excerpt, Alberic changed his mind associating Prester John with the Mongols and put forth the idea that the Mongols killed Prester John. So now we specifically talk in Genghis Khan. The Mongols killed Prester John and took over his demir that became increasingly popular as an explanation for why the belligerent Mongols were initially thought to be benevolent Christian kingdom. Mm, initially thought to be a benevolent Christian king. So in, initially, they said, oh, they must be these peaceful Hebrews. And then Genghis Khan took it over. They said, oh, shit. You know what I mean? What's going on? Now, this letter is dated 1230. Or Preston John and Genghis Khan, they said, popped off in 1202. All right? Straight up. Straight up, Uno. Let go. So at this time, it says Preston John, King of the Indians, sent his letters full of astonishing things to diverse kings of Christendom, but especially to Manuel, the Emperor of Constantinople. Now I got a feeling that Manuel might be, you know what I mean? I don't know if this Manuel has anything to do with Emmanuel, but for some reason he sent it directly to Manuel or Emmanuel, all right, who at that time is the emperor of Constantinople. Remember, Constantinople is originally, you know, Khazaria, which is originally Mazaka, which is originally Mosak. You dig? So now you're dealing with Mosak, 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 Moses. So this area is the Byzantine, all right? This area here. The Byzantine is what was taken down one year after the Papal Bull, 1453. And again, they also say that, that um, you know what I'm saying, these this uh the Sabanyan River stopped flowing in the same year, 1453. So so much happened around the same time. Now let's get his time. Preston John, King of the Indians, sent his letters full of astonishing things to diverse kingdoms of Christendom but especially to Manuel, the emperor of Constantinople, and to Frederick, the emperor of the Romans, out which letters this was written, Preston John, king of kings, lord of lords of the earth, by the power and virtue of God, to Emmanuel. I said, oh, power and virtue, Lord, Christ, Jesus. You know, they, they, they Christianized this stuff. But see, specifically, this letter is sent to Emmanuel. Not just manual, e manual. Now, does it have anything to do with the Emmanuel, you know, that will be born and all this stuff? The, 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 the sign around this Emmanuel, or they'll call his name Emmanuel. I don't know. But King David, Pastor John, sent a letter directly to Emmanuel. <coughs> let's go. All right, man, let's get it for the dismount. 
What it do, young Cherokee Peasy? Hey, hi, hey, hi, hey, hi, uh, David the Magic Negro. What it do, man? What it do, man? All right, let's go. So Emmanuel gets this drop. Now it says, Preston John, King of Kings, to Emmanuel, governor to the Romans, health, and so on, ex excelling every king of the whole earth in virtue and power. 72 kings are tribute to us because there are many there are many Christians and so on, which continues up to. We also have another palette, which was made through the revelation given to my father, who was called Quasadias or something like that. All right, in 1170, all right. So in 1170, certain letters of Pope Alexander were found, which he sent to Preston John mentioned above who was also carefully instructed on the faith and customs of the Holy Roman Church by a certain Bishop Philip ordained by the same Pope. This Philip has sent a cross to the Roman Pope by the same Preston John. After the capture of Damietta, Damietta, a certain prophecy written in Chaldean letters was also found in the temple of the Saracens, which Lord Pella Pelagius, Cardinal Bishop of Albano and, Leg and Legate, Legate to those parts, made to be translated into Latin and sent to Rome to the Lord Pope, which a certain Master James appointed Legate to Ireland by the Lord Pope, carried from Rome to Clairefox, Clairefox, something like that. Continuing to Ireland, many things were present in this astronomical prophecy about the things which came to pass in the promised land, about Nur Adin and Saladin, about the capture of Jerusalem in 1187. The capture of Jerusalem in 1187. So this is all Preston John territory. And the two kings, Philip II of France and Richard I, the Lionheart of England, who both retook Acre in 1191. And I definitely want to start digging on this connection between Richard the Lionheart with the Scottish Picts and specifically with Preston John, because I've come across this multiple times, how they had some type of not really alliance or how Preston John was supposed to be coming to his aid. Or, you know, it seems to be also a family connection, just like with um, Emmanuel with this Richard the Lionheart that's going on in uh, Scotland at this time. You know, you know about the Scots and you know about Princess Koshi. It says, indeed, a prophecy of this sort, although it speaks the truth in certain things, still deceives in many things. It is also written in that prophecy that a certain king would come from the eastern region who will be called David by name and that another king. So this is coming out of 1220. So we're talking about messianic times and David returning today. They were talking about David returning then. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Is it repeating itself? Let's go. So a prophecy, it says that a certain king would come from the eastern region who will be called David by name and that another king would come from the western region who will destroy the land of the Saracens up to Jerusalem and that in the month of July, a war should be made between the Saracens and the Christians near Cairo in Egypt in the year 1221. Then the highest pontiff honor Honorius, Honorius the third wrote to all the archbishops of France that Cardinal Pelagius had written from the overseas region that King David, who was called Preston John, a God-fearing man having passed Persia into his powerful land and having subdued the Persian Sultan on the field of battle, invading and occupying his land for 24 days, possesses a great many fortified cities and councils and castles so if you got a preston john fighting against the sultan right that means that we weren't fighting for the sultan right so you got these hebrews fighting against you know what i mean these other tribes that were under the sultan so these are different tribes and it really paints that more on more picture even clearer you know more of just means great all right you're just great you're great, man. So which great are we talking about? All right. So one great is fighting against another great. 
but which one is the real great? You know what I mean? What's one is really happening? If Preston John King David is fighting against the Sultan, and the Sultan, according to this doc, and other documents is talking about uh, Preston John having 72 kings pay him tribute. He's called the emperor of, of the Abyssinians. You know what I mean? This is important dig, and that's why, you know what I'm saying, not too many can really dig on it, you know, truthfully, man, because they want to keep hiding or discrediting your priest king, man, even though Hosea is telling you that you will be searching for David. A lot of people don't really support your David search because then they just bust it wide open, man. They can't just say, you black, we black, you more, we more, we this, we that. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So who was fighting against the Sultan? Who was fighting with the Sultan or for the Sultan? And it's not to call separation, it's to see clearly. Because unless you know what happened, how you gonna know what's coming, you know what I'm saying? So as long as we can clearly identify, historically speaking, all right, it is is there credence to this? That's why we can dig on uh, Noble Drew Ali, who, who, who makes it clear. He says, man, Joshua, we call him Joshua the robber. He's robbing our lands. All right, cool. So you got a perspective, you know what I mean? That Joshua, this, this Hebrew is, is robbing you. You know what I mean? Then the Hebrews have a perspective that they are regaining their territories. Some people have a perspective that the Mayan or the Aztec, the Aztec are fighting other indigenous people, you know what I mean? Other people have, the Aztecs have perspective that they're regaining lands that are their family lands. They got the hijacks on them. You know, that's not, um, you know what I'm saying? Valuing the most high or valuing the commandments of the lands anyway. You know what I mean? So now you got these two different perspectives and that's what you got to keep really isolating and really seeing, man, putting them apart. Said, all right, man, if, if these are two distinct perspectives, if Noble Drew Ali is calling Joshua, Joshua the robber, and he's robbing us because we want all these lands for the Moabites and Ham and Cush and everything else, and the Hebrews or the Mayans or the Aztecs are saying that they're reclaiming, you know what I'm saying, because this is what the creator has allotted to their heritage as a heritage, as an inheritance, you know what I'm saying, then either you got an inheritance or you don't. So anyone trying to take an inheritance from you and say, go to Africa, or taking the hands from you and say, uh, this is all Morocco. <laughs> like, really? You know what I mean? Okay. Because it seems to be a big difference between Atlantis and Mu. And the Atlantean energy is rocking with the Egyptian energy. The Egyptian energy is rocking with the Egypt seas. And the Egypt seas are rocking with the Ethiopians in Western Europe that are the Moors, that are Moabite. So you're not coming from an Atlantean energy. You're coming from Mu. You're coming from a different energy. You're coming from a dragon frequency. You're coming from the Pacific. These are two different, you know, viewpoints, you know, that have always been kind of a clear cut thing. So now it's like we all got kind of, you know, mushed up into one thing. We got mushed up into you're black, you're African, you're this, you're that, you know what I'm saying? And that's the issue. You know what I mean? It's that you're not causing a division by identifying you, you know what I mean, by investigating you. And sometimes you need to have a secluded or a separation, you know what I mean, so that you can see clearly. Now, when you see clearly, then you can go and say, all right, cool, we could tribe up and do whatever. But don't come in between our investigation to discover us or discover our tribe and say, all right, well, no, 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 we're all just this, and we're all just this, and don't, don't separate you guys. Come on, man, because we want... We need your power. We need you sucked in to us. We need you to be in this science temple day. We need you to, you know, be down with the Sultan so that we can all click up. You know, nah, man, we, we hijack free, man. We only rock with the creator, man. I mean, that's, that's just how we rock it. You know what I mean? So let's finish this out, man, for the dismount. Get over to the drop. Come fresh. Just laid it out. We got big brother nature about to lay it out, man. Let's go. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick it up. Uh, man, it's a great drive. It's a great drive. All right, all right, all right. I'll pick it up right here. I'll pick it up right here. Indeed, at that time, there arose the Tartars, a certain barbarian people under the power of Preston John. So get Genghis Khan on your mind. When Preston John was in battle against 
the Medes and Persians. He called them to his aid and he placed them in force. And you got the Tartars coming down. Now this is Genghis Khan's folks. And in the same, you know, source here it says that Genghis Khan people came from Moal, Moal, M A M O A L. We're connecting that possibly with Moab. What's the difference? What's the difference between Moab and Moab? We still are investigating, right? But it says indeed at that time there arose the Tartars, a certain barbarian people, under the power of Prester John. When Prester John was in battle against the Medes and Persians, he called them to his aid and placed them in force and fortifications. They seeing that they were strong to him, they killed him and occupied his land. So it's another take on this Genghis Khan, Prester John war. It's saying they killed Prester John and occupied his land. For the most part, setting a king above them. That's Genghis Khan. We read that. So now Genghis Khan is king over these Tartars. Getting rid of Prester John. Remember, he wanted to marry into his David family, his daughters. Prester John was offended. He said, man, I'll burn my daughters before I give them to you. Matter of fact, if you do anything else treasonous, I'm going to, you know, take your head off down there. So he said he killed him, occupied his land for the most part, setting a king above him. And again, he said occupied his land for the most part. So it ain't like Genghis Khan, but for the most part, he occupied a lot of his land. Killed him, occupied his land, setting a king above him, all though as though he was Preston John. So they set a king above the Tartars as if he was Preston John. Now, after 1202, you got Genghis Khan calling himself David. You got Genghis Khan calling himself Preston John. And again, it's very interesting when you dig on this before you put it into mythology, you're going to have to put Genghis Khan into mythology. And when you put Genghis Khan into mythology, you're going to have to put Batu Khan into mythology and, 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 and Gayuk Khan into mythology. And and monkey, mange Khan. You know, you gotta put all the cons into mythology. Cause they can't they can't find the tomb of, of Genghis Khan, but they know Genghis Khan is rocking because they got too much, you know what I'm saying, too much drop on that, man. A high big scoop, what it do, what it do. You know what I mean? So yeah, man, you know, it's like that's it's all love, you know what I mean? But we gotta be able to isolate these particular, you know what I'm saying you know, portions here and kind of, you know, search them out, put them back in with the, with the gumbo, mix it all, you know, with, with, with the vegan gumbo, you know, put it all with the vegan gumbo, you know, you know, vegan gumbo don't taste as good as, you know, you know, but if you, if you know how to do it right, I think Chef Kenny know how to do a good vegan gumbo, but if you had the old school thing, you're trying to go vegan and eat gumbo, just, just give up the gumbo, man. It's, it's not going to happen. It's like trying to eat pizza, you know, after you, you know what I'm saying? You just want to get some things up, man. All right, let's get it. Getting off track. <laughs> Talking about gumbo. <laughs> what it do, what it do. All right, so Preston John is now his last taken over by Genghis Khan. They set a king above them as though he was Preston John. And from that time on, they did many evils in the land, such that this year they killed 42 bishops and greater Armenia. Therefore, there was a rumor that this people of the Tartars wished to come to Cumania and Hungary, but to find out whether or not this was true, four brother, four brothers preachers were sent to Hungary who traveled for a hundred days to old Hungary. When they returned, they announced that the Tartars had already occupied old Hungary and placed it at their submission. And uh, this John Carpini this drought right here. Look, man, you got the whole PDF. Go to 432 to drop. Go in the search box. Put in the Preston John Legend and Sources by Keegan Brewer. You're going to get the whole joint. Love the Aqua Tie Battle, man. And we're just talking about having the drop, man. It says the rise of the Mongols in 1247 in the 13th century radically altered the European worldview with Asia becoming a place of geopolitical importance and potential danger for this European leaders sent a number of travelers to exchange messages with the Mongol Khans to perform reconnaissance 
reconnaissance. They were reconning you. The earliest of these was John de Plano Carpini, an Italian sent by Pope Innocent IV in 1245, a plump elderly man of 65. John endured the grueling journey to Mongolia, carrying the Pope's letter demanding that the Mongol great Khan Gayuk, Gayuk Khan, convert to Christianity, only to be rebuffed and sent back to Europe, carrying an equally arrogant letter demanding that the Pope bow to the Mongols. So, <laughs> um, they tried to convert Gayuk Khan, and he said, nah, man, uh, Mr. Pope, Mr. Pope Innocent, uh, they, they call you Pope Innocent? Hey, man, you're going to have to uh, get down or lay down, man. You're going to have to convert to the, to the Mongol flow. You know what I mean? That's how the Mongols was getting down. So when anybody tell you that these are Christians, there's a Christian kingdom and Christian, 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 not even the Mongols, not, not, not even Guy Yu Khan was down with that shit. So how do you think they got to King David? You know what I'm saying? It was always war. You know what I mean? But Genghis Khan or, you know, some of his lineages, although they did more with these Christians, they still weren't getting down with that. They still knew better. You know what I'm saying? But they they were trying to form alliances. So you had different flows that were a part of that. It said demanding that the Mongol John endured the grueling journey to Mongolia and carrying the Pope's letter demanding that the Mongol great Khan convert to Christianity only to be rebuffed and sent back to Europe carrying an equally arrogant letter demanding that the Pope bow down to the Mongol will. Upon return to Europe, John seems to have faced skepticism from his audiences who disbelieved many of the claims he made about the East. This caused him to revise the text to improve its credibility. Presented below is the text's second redaction, which added some details to the account of Prester John. I think that's a great place, man, to pick up on Prester John number 41, man. I told you we're going to get to 50, man. I told you we're going to get to 50, man. Hey, hi, man. Shalawan to the tribe, man. Yosef the real. What it do, man? What it do? We about to be in the ether, man. We got Brother Nature show, man. I I, I got to put it up, bro. I got you, bro. You know what I mean? I know you sent it in. So we're going to get ready for Brother Nature show. It's about to be popping off in about five minutes at TDR, man. Excuse my lateness to the ether. I'm about to get over there right now. A hop to calm fresh. A hop to Chef Candy, man. She about to be over there, man. Kicking that real rap. I see Caramayo. And if y'all don't go, make sure you are subscribed to Caramayo. And even if you think you subscribe to somebody, resubscribe. Because a lot of times they like to unsubscribe people. And if you don't have notifications on and stuff like that, because we're going to start going live a little more. You know what I mean? A little more. I made some promises, man. So, you know, I'm, I'm with y'all, man. I'm with y'all, man. Hey, hi, man. Big Mike Premier, what it do, man? Uh, Zoe Taylor, what it do? Purple set, what it do? We just flowing, man. We surfing the wave. Hey, hop to you, man. Look, man, we in the ether, man. All right, we have 432 to drop. We live. Get the app. We live. We're about to be live at 9 o'clock for Turf Thurs. And I'm going to keep it going, man. I might just keep the press hour going for Turf Thurs, man. You know what I mean? We're going to be listening to some great music for it, man. What it do, Zeke, for, you know, just being a part of this great team, man, to put this together for y'all, man. So keep the water flowing. Keep the power, you know what I'm saying, uh, increasing. Increase your power, man, by being hijack free. A hop to the home team, man. Stay up. Suit up. Choose up. Halawa. Peace and power. You still alive?